happy 91st Facebook Live Wednesday. I have a little friend next to me today because our topic today is how to give yourself permission to heal your inner child. I'll talk about what is your inner child. And this bear was given to my mama when she was in the care home. It was a bear that Chelsea got when she went to Monaco, a gym um, to take gymnastics. And my mom started slowly pulling strings, um, you know, stretching out the neckline, which we would have, she would have scolded me for doing that. But I realized that, you know, her inner child through Alzheimer's probably needed a lot of healing. And, um, hey, Ahmed. And when we realize that all of us have a young, child within us, right? Who has been wounded, who has suffered. And some of these memories you might not even know about. Some of them might be, be from generational trauma, something that happened to your grandparents, your great, great grandparents. A little side note, my dad, before he was born, um, he had an older sister who drowned in a stream in Maui. And my dad's, um, father found his daughter dead in the stream on his way home from work. That must have created a lot of fear, you know, for um, just water in general. Um, I, as a mother, made sure when I heard this story growing up that I enrolled my daughters in swimming lessons. Now, the reason why I bring that up is there's another type of mindset where I would think I'm going to stay away from water, right? So when you have suffering and your body holds emotional and physical pain, right? And if you ignore it, it's there and we stifle it. And we might have things that might have happened in childhood, as a teenager, in relationships that you've had, professional and personal. So what I'd like to do is give you a couple of statements to say if you are interested in healing your inner child, because I finally realized affirmations, you know, meditations, um, you know, changing your mindset to be positive, all of that will be harder to practice if you do not heal your inner child. So picture that wounded child that's in you, you know, whether you're 20 or 90, we all have this part. So I invite you to just say these words. I go back to my inner child. And I take care of my inner child, right? Write a letter to your inner child. Or maybe when you're driving, you're taking a shower, take a moment to have a conversation. What does your inner child need? If you're feeling disrespected, if you're feeling that life is unfair, if you're feeling that you're not getting the support that you deserve, maybe you feel like you're not worthy or you feel like why is life the way that it is? You know, you might be feeling anger, frustration, any type of negative feeling that just boils in our, you know, in our soul. It's a trigger that something happened in our inner child when we were younger, right? In during our childhood where we are triggered. If someone says something that really gets you upset or someone, um, you know, some situation happens and you're really sad, you know, embrace that feeling and ask yourself, what would I tell a five-year-old? What would I tell my five-year-old self? What would my five-year-old self tell me today? When I did this exercise, it was very enlightening because I realized I have a lot of attachment to either, you know, feeling competent, um, you know, feeling um, like if I'm not, if I am told that I'm wrong, right, which is competence, if I feel like I'm going to be judged based on competence, it's a big trigger for me. And in my life, I've decided to just set a higher goal, get the straight A's, you know, go to college. And that does not really feed my soul, right? So when you go back and I have um, a few, you know, um, notes here, your intention is to do everything in your power to heal, right? Your wounds, your emotional wounds, because if you don't, you know, people who suffer from PTSD, it doesn't have to be because you went to war. It could be something that happened when you were six and your mom or dad or sibling or teacher said something that created a little, like your self-esteem might have been chipped away or you felt 
just not good enough. All of us have that, right? That you are not good enough. Even people who are multimillionaires, people who, you know, are well-respected, there's a part of them who, you know, the research that I've done, that every single one of us has something in us that stemmed from our childhood. So ask your child, your inner child, what do you need to heal? Sometimes it could be forgiveness. I notice that as a parent, whenever I say something that creates tension or creates a conflict, or maybe my daughters are hurt by it, I feel like a crappy mother. And then I question my competence as a parent coach in this new career path, right? And then my daughter, my older one said, mom, whenever you say you're a crappy parent, that is not a good, a, a, you know, a positive thing for a child to hear. And I thought, you know, it is, it is kind of like the victim mode because you're like, sorry that I, you know, I'm not, not the best mom that you deserve or, you know, whatever you say in an argument, it's a clue to what your inner child needs. So listen to the words that you say, observe the arguments that you engage in. And if you, you know, tell yourself, it's not even worth arguing about and you walk away, something in you is bothered whenever you're bothered, right? It is a sign that there is a part of you that needs healing. If you're not a writer, you don't want to jot down notes, speak it into your phone, say it out loud. And sometimes that will trigger what you need. Maybe you need self-forgiveness. Maybe you need to practice compassion and tell yourself, it's okay that I hurt, you know, my ex or my former boss or I, I acted inappropriately or I, you know, shouldn't have said this, shouldn't have done that. But, you know, when you um, just take the time and give yourself permission, right, to heal what is it's not wrong. We don't need, we don't need to fix ourselves. I don't think we should ever think that we're broken, but sometimes our soul just needs healing because the wounds, it's kind of like if you fell down and you had uh, an open cut, right? And you want to heal it and you try everything. And then sometimes you end up scratching it subconsciously, or you end up opening the wound. Sometimes, you know, you, you do something and the wound reopens. Think of every single time you're triggered, your, your wound your inner child wound is ripped open. So I came across um, why your inner child, what is the importance of healing this part of you? Number one, it increases self-awareness. Let me refer to my notes. Tell, um, you know, maybe you, you were told your opinion didn't matter. Maybe you were raised um, with the, um, you know, the parenting style where, you know what, um, children are just meant to be seen and not heard. Maybe you didn't feel like you had a safe, nurturing environment and you felt judged. You felt, you know, if you didn't earn the right grades or you didn't do the right, um, choose the right decisions, then your parents were disappointed. And I've made that mistake of telling my children, I thought, I'm, I'm just being honest. I'm going to just say that you disappointed me. Those are hurtful words that can create a wound so deep that when they get into the real world, some boss might say something, a professor, even a friend, a significant other, a sibling. They will take it personally and they will really blame themselves for not being good enough. So this is something that I, I didn't realize if someone brings home like a C or a B and a parent says, good job, but you know what? Let's shoot for the stars. I know if you apply yourself better, you can get that A. The child hears, I guess my B is not good enough. And you don't realize that what we think is motivating. I recently came across a situation um, with my youngest and I didn't realize that one of my TikToks was triggering and I thought it was motivational and she felt it was a personal attack. I immediately went to, oh my gosh, I am an incompetent, um, crappy mom. I notice my mind always goes there and it's about competence. It's about disappointing someone. And when we get to that space, just remind yourself, you're not responsible for another person's journey. If what you say hurts them, don't blame yourself for hurting them. You were just saying what you, maybe your soul needed to say. 
You know, we shouldn't apologize for the words that we, we say to, you know, I'm going to backtrack that. Sometimes an apology needs to be said to create peace, peace over principle. So sometimes you might think, oh, I don't need to apologize because my daughter needed to hear that she's not, you know, operating um, according to her potential. She's not doing what she should be doing. Well, backtrack and ask yourself what that five-year-old wants to be told. You don't want to be told that you're not fulfilling your potential. I have a lot of kids. Yeah, my mom says I'm not fulfilling my potential. She wants to be take me aim higher, and I'm fine with my C's. Don't make your goals for your for yourself that you have for your child. Don't do that. I, I know I shouldn't be doing the shoulds, but when you instill your goals on your child, it's one thing instilling values and explaining why a work ethic is important. Practicing compassion, you know, being kind, being forgiving. But when you say you should be a, uh, you know, choose a profession where you make money, make sure that you learn how to save money because you know what you do, you tend to waste it. Any of these say, things that come out of your mouth just really, and that's what I'm trying to learn and I'm failing at it. I told my, my daughter, what do you need from me? I need hugs, not lectures. Listen, and I admit it, I am failing, mom is failing, own it. And I could see her um, opening up and, and just don't be hard on yourself. But you know, this, the healing your inner child helps talking about, think about what brought you joy as a child. Maybe you need to revisit and do something that made you smile. And so you're just so happy when you did this as a child. I um, shared some memories um, with a friend of mine and she remembered like a, a teddy bear that she, um, you know, used to call uh, Papa because she was a single, um, raised by a single mom. And she said, I wonder if my mom thought it was weird that I called my bear Papa and I talked to my bear, you know, because she substituted her absent dad um, with the bear. And I'm thinking as a mother, Two ways, right? The mother could say, oh my gosh, I'm a horrible mom. Now my daughter, my, you know, my daughter is talking to this bear, calling her, calling him Papa. But another part of her might think, well, I'm so glad my, my daughter is healing that part of herself that wants a father figure. And why not have her bear represent her Papa, right? So when we go through life and you feel either mistreated or you feel triggered, um, ask yourself what your inner child needs to heal. Maybe you don't feel that, um, you know, no one listens to you. I feel that a lot of times in my household. Or doesn't my my opinion matter? You know, maybe like when you share your opinion with your your daughters and your sons, they look at you and go, why Why do you think that? I don't, I don't agree with that. And you think, does my opinion is it wrong does it matter you know and there's there's just so many things that we just in conversation maybe you overhear someone you know arguing and you think oh my gosh do I sound like that I must sound like that when I'm you know when I'm arguing with my um significant other or a friend or my my child so you know practice compassion right realize that parents are human if you're a parent you make mistakes it's okay your friend, you're an employee, you're an employer. You know, I'm I'm owning my mistakes now. I've been making a lot of mistakes with my students, feeling a lot of incompetence. And I laugh, I jokingly say, you know, I, I don't know if your parents are gonna wanna fire me, but you know what? This just proves that, guess what? Teachers make mistakes, you know? But it's like, I have to say that to myself because part of me thinks I shouldn't make mistakes if people are, you know, hiring me, but, we all make mistakes and we just have to embrace it, right? Empowering. I love this one. Connecting with your inner child can be so empowering. You know why? Because it allows you to take control of your emotions and just stand up to you. I think a lot of, um, a lot of us in 2022, we want to be bold. We want to like, I, I mentioned that I want to be brave and get out of my comfort zone. You know, a lot of us want to stop being people pleasers, and yet we want to um, be compassionate. We don't want to hurt others. And then we are in this, this fuzzy line, right? Well, how do you create healthy boundaries? What if it's like with your husband or your friend or your 
boss or like my students. Sometimes my students become a really close friend, right? Sometimes my daughters become close friends, but that boundary can really cause your inner child to be triggered if you do not just respect those emotional boundaries. Because if you feel hurt, if you feel that you weren't respected, if you feel that you were um, maybe targeted, sometimes in this family, you know, they, they make fun of me not knowing my directions. And I'll say, I know the post office is there. And they go, oh, mom, you know her, she always gets your directions wrong. And it's a triggering thing. Why? Because to me, it makes me feel incompetent. And they just think it's funny, right? But then at the same time, I might make a joke about, you know, one of my daughters or my husband. And I think now I look, I stop and I think, oh, maybe it wasn't funny to them. So using sarcasm, humor, that could be triggering too. Because what if as a child, they were, um, you know, their parents used sarcasm. I had a uh, one of my students, I said, did you tell your dad that you aced the test? And she goes, it doesn't matter. And I go, why? You know, she'd be proud. And so, I, you know, I tell the dad and the dad goes, so who did you copy from? And I thought, okay, that's why she didn't um, want to tell the dad. Or the mother would say stuff like, you better not eat those sweets because you're not going to be able to find a boyfriend if you keep eating like that. You wonder do we, are we not aware, right? But sometimes if you're an adult who were, you know, and you were treated that way and maybe they used humor to, you think it's going to motivate someone, that childhood wound is ripped open. You know, I was just talking about the wounds that we have physically. That emotional wound is ripped open. You have just, it's almost like you need stitches. You need emotional stitches to heal. How do you get emotional stitches? I'm about to tell you, and this is what my mission is. You know, it's not just, I thought as a parent coach, you know, it's like my goal is to decrease the stress of the parenting journey and help you raise your kids, you know, to become resilient and responsible and respectful. And then I thought, you know what? As parents, that if you are struggling as a parent and you feel like, I don't even know what I'm doing, it's your inner child. That's the part of you that is craving to be healed because your inner child is sometimes saying, I don't know, I'm a, you're a parent, but you know, this five-year-old self, I don't know what to do. Do you take your child's phone away? Do you take the video games away? Um, I don't know. And so there, there is no right or wrong way to parent, right? There might not be any manual, but I'm letting you know that if you heal your inner child, it will make parenting less stressful you won't be losing your sanity. You will enjoy parenting. Yeah, is that like a weird thought? Enjoy parenting? What? How can I enjoy parenting when I'm constantly stressed and, you know, with all of this rising COVID and is distance learning going to come back? And what do I do? Right? And as we, if you find yourself losing your temper, and that's me, I'm realizing, oh, my inner child is desperately needing some healing. What do I do now? It could be as simple as, and I've done this, you know, um, I, I need to walk away. Okay. Let's, let's resume this. And this is hard, but as soon as you find yourself, even in the middle of your rant, and I realize I'm doing my, my life lesson lecture thing. Yes. Love, love, self love. Oh my gosh. You need to self love our children. What does that even mean? Deslin, you have Perfect words. How can we love our children if we do not love ourselves? I'm finding out more and more, I must not love myself. And that was a huge, huge eye-opener for me. Um, the last one, you know, when you acknowledge your self-worth and you love yourself, your self-esteem will skyrocket because you will feel and know that you are worthy. Destin's message, you are good enough. And I was just reading this article, you know, that a lot of times we can do the best job as parents, but the number one thing, it's not the grades, it's not even the discipline, it's not guiding them to make right decisions, it's teaching them to love themselves through hardship, through mistakes, through heartbreak, through the harsh criticism that they might receive and then they might give and regret. So, you know, connect 
my last thing is, you know, connect trauma with behaviors. Because in order to change behaviors, we do need to self-soothe. It it's, reminds me of when the pacifier, remember when I first gave birth and I was reading all of this stuff, it's like pacifiers up through age six months and I really followed the rules. And then you realize your child needs to learn how to self-soothe. Allow your child to cry, they will learn to self-soothe. So as a parent, trust your child's journey and remind them every day why they should love themselves, why they are worthy. Even if they failed an exam, even if they failed the, the quarter, even if, you know, they lost their job and they got fired or maybe they applied, you know, a hundred times. I remember when Sabrina applied a hundred times, a um, hundred rejections, probably a hundred plus. And then, you know, you realize, wow, my reject, I've, re I've been rejected a hundred times. And then you have to talk to that inner child. Wait a minute. Just because someone else rejected you, that does not define whether you're worth loving, whether you're worth um, your worth, period. So as I close, I just want to remind you, you know, to identify, right? Whenever you get into that, like, oh my gosh, I'm going to have a meltdown. I just call it desolate. <laughs> but three questions. Ask yourself, what am I feeling? What is the thought that entered my mind? Is it true? And if you find it to be true, like I'll say, yes, I am incompetent. I have that algebra problem wrong. My feeling is, you know, embarrassment. So what do I do from, where do I go from there? Wait a minute. I'm human. I'm allowed to make even two consecutive mistakes. It's okay if they paid me. I need them to know that I, you know, as a tutor, I'm not infallible. I am going to get problems wrong. I might help you on an assignment and you might get, uh, you know, not the grade that you hope to get. And it does not define my worth. And you say the affirmations as you navigate the journey of healing your inner child. So I hope that just, you know, shed light on, you know, many of us might not even know. It's a, it's a new concept. Heal your inner child. Inner child I'm 57. What inner child? But the inner child is the wounded child within, right? We all have an inner child that has been wounded, that has experienced trauma. And the trauma could be that um, I remember one of my, my first grade teachers said, you know, I got caught cheating. I didn't know how to do math, simple subtraction. I remember I was borrowing and I couldn't get it. So I copied and she made me sit on the outside and told, you know, said in front of everyone. So instead of just sitting there waiting to be called back in, I walked home. <laughs> I was going to sit outside on a chair. But that, I think, developed my need to be competent, you know, and you realize something so small. If you went to school and someone said, why are you wearing that, those colors? They don't even match. Or, oh, you had your hair cut. That's Hmm, why'd you do that? You know, when it could be such tiny, tiny comments. Learn that those are triggers if you feel hurt, if you feel angry, frustrated, if you just feel any, like, it doesn't resonate you. Like, I don't like this feeling. That is your inner child craving some healing. So I just want to... um tell you about Deslin's uh, and in my workshop that's coming up is on meditations, affirmations, and movement. It is going to be on Saturday, January uh, 29th at 5.30 p.m. Hawaii time. Um, we are hosting our first workshop that is a paid event, so it's $22.22. And um, look that up, what 222 means. We are ready to be bold be brave, and be there for you to help you heal, to help you know that simple movements can really just change your mindset. It can be life-changing. So if you incorporate some meditation, some affirmations, some movement, and it is, yes, Destin said it's going to be fun. It's going to be like going into the on the playground, your inner child. I'm letting you know, if you are having reservations, your inner child is craving something like this because it is 
might be out of your comfort zone. You might be like the inner child. No, pass. I invite you to take a chance on us. 22 bucks, 22 cents, not a real huge, huge investment. It is an investment, but we will be providing a lot of fun, a lot of thought provoking, um, just questions and, you know, ways to heal. So if you're ready to heal in 2022, um, go on Deslin Hockey's link, um, and we will be sharing the link. It's an event in, in ugh, sorry, event bright. And we are really excited about this venture. We will be holding, um, hosting this workshop every fourth Saturday. Yes, it is not a one-time event. We have been, um, brainstorming and committed to being there because this year, should be, right, in our eyes, a year to heal, a year to create healthy boundaries, a year to, you know, just stand up for ourselves yet. Practice compassion, practice grace, and practice the, just the, just get out of your comfort zone and practice self-healing. Thank you for watching, guys. Next Wednesday, I have Deslin. Um, who will be with me on my Facebook Live Wednesday, and we will be talking more about why affirmations, meditations, and movement can help heal your inner child. Thanks, guys. Bye.